Hey guys, how's it going today? Well, we are on day two of Gord, uh, the elephant. So if you've seen the first part, and if you haven't, go back to that. But if you haven't, uh, or little bit, try that again. If you've seen the first part, I'm showing you the process and how it's working. Now, uh, Gord is now advanced and I have actually changed quite a few things. The other thing too here is, um, when I was actually making it, uh, the first time, uh, there was a little mistake made. Uh, I went to the store and I asked to get polymer clay and the girl directed me to the polymer clay which also had plasterzine clay right beside it and they are literally in the same package. There's a slight difference, the spelling. And of course the dyslexic guy here grabbed the wrong clay. So I got about halfway done and realized that, uh, yeah, that's not right. Because that would have just become a melting mess inside the uh, oven, and that would not have been good. So, I'm now back working on old gourd here, and things are looking good. And as I said, I've changed the eyes a little bit, changed a few other things, but now I'm starting to get into the detail. So I'm going to show you how the detail works, okay? Oh, and how I smooth things out, too. Got a little bit on there for that. Okay, so here's my elephant legs. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'll basically design uh, to make it look like an elephant's foot. Uh, I'm just doing a rough here right now, but you get the idea. And then basically once you've got that all figured out, again, I don't really want to put a lot of detail in yet until I've got my whole thing put together. Because I have an idea for detail, which I think is going to look phenomenal. But what I did was a piece of doweling. How long this is, I don't know. Let's see, it is, uh, oh, five and a quarter inches, but I don't think it really matters. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to do it so that you can figure out how your legs are going to look, right? Uh, and I may wind up cutting off a big chunk. Uh, it's not until I actually get it inside the gourd, which is going to take a little bit of drilling. I'll show you that in a few minutes. Uh, but basically what I'm going to do is that's going to get drilled into there. Okay, so what I did was I applied the leg. Basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually make them tight and together uh, as much as possible because I think that's going to give lots of support to the actual product when it's actually sitting up. I drilled a hole in the bottom, uh, used my big trusty drill, right, looks nice and dangerous, oh yeah, big drill. So I just drilled a hole in the bottom uh, and now it's basically just trying to figure out what's going to look the best for the leg. So I'll make my other three legs and then I'll apply those and then the rest will start being a stand-up situation. So I came to the realization that the ear, which I thought was okay, wasn't okay. Uh, but the rest of it I'm happy with and then uh, I worked on the legs. Uh, we'll take a look right here at the elephant legs. So I roughed those in and uh, making it so that hopefully it should be able to stand on its own by the time I'm finished. I may have to put a little bit more counterweight on the back side of the elephant to make sure that it'll stand up. All right, so for the ears, remember I said I was going to show you how I made the ears. I made it really simple. I took my wire, I bent it, right? Then I made a little hole in the gourd itself, as you can see, and uh, that's on the upper one here. And then I just pop it in. And now we have a beautiful ear and a frame for the clay to go around. Now, probably maybe to even make it a little stronger, what I'll do is I'll wrap a couple of wires across here too, uh, just to give it a little bit more oomph. Now, as I said, I was gonna add some extra wire in there, basically just for some more support. Uh, I think that's actually gonna work really, really well. So I can basically shape it, and I, I might even cook it before uh, going any farther with it. I'll actually make it so it's nice and stiff, and then uh, I can cut into it and carve into it and stuff like that. So, I was wrong. Started adding clay, started poking through right away, and realized that that was wrong. So, I added tin foil to the wire, and that makes a huge difference. Now, we'll see how that works. I think it's going to be much better. Hey, guys. So, you know when you're doing something, and everything is going perfect, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to be great, it's going to all work out. And then you realize that, uh-oh, something's wrong. See, as I was putting the clay on, I thought to myself, wow texture of this is amazing like it feels almost like plasterzine because the polymer clay has a little bit more of a thickness to it and it takes a little bit more to massage so I pulled a piece off and I'm putting it on and 
it's just going on really super smooth. And what I realized was I had said to the girl, Polymer Pl Clay, at the art store, and I think she misunderstood, and she directed me to a, another shelving area, and uh, I had four blocks of plasterzine. Yeah, plasterzine. So, I am going to be ripping parts off of this elephant's legs and redoing them because they need to be done in polymer play, not the plasterzine which would melt in my oven and make a big mess and my wife would be not happy and she would hurt me. No, she would never hurt me. Pinch me maybe really hard. So, I'll get on to that next. Okay guys, so I'm working on fixing my legs right now and putting the clay on. So, one of the things that really actually did save a little bit of time and I really do like is this product right here. And basically what it is, is it's a pasta maker. Uh, basically you can use it to flatten out your clay. So that's what I'm doing and it's definitely cutting out some time because I'm used to just kind of putting on on bit by bit by bit. Now I can actually do it much faster. So one of these is actually really kind of essential if you are doing a lot of work. And uh, I, I'm, I'm loving it. It's, it's great. So definitely give it a try. Now, I just showed you on time lapse that really fast, but what I did was I literally made a ball, threw it into my little pasta maker here, right? Flattened it out and then was able to get around the elephant's legs fairly quickly. Okay, so basically what I've done is I've made a nice big flat piece for myself. I grab it just like a, I don't know, mummifying something, you know, you just wrap the band-aid around. And then you can sit down and start to take your thumb and your fingers and start to smooth it out to the way you want. And I even took my hand like that pretty quickly and was able to get a fairly smooth situation. Now the rest of it's just going to be detailing and making sure it looks right. So there you are. After uh, my disaster, I've actually got the legs back on. Uh, so now it'll give me uh, time to actually start to develop the legs and make them look like actual elephant legs. So, as you can see, the elephant is now coming along. And then basically what I do is I'll add a strip on or two of the clay, which I have thinned out with my pasta maker or my flattener for the clay. And uh, it's really doing a great job, right? And I'm just being able to apply that. And then it'll be basically just applying, 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 and then adding in the detail. So. As you can see, I'm now applying the legs. So basically what I've done is, uh, again, I've taken my pasta maker and flattened out myself some clay and just adding that on. And then as I add it on, I'll start to smooth it out and uh, it looks like he's developing. And I also decided to extend the ear out. I decided, uh, I think it looks a little cooler that way. So, you may be asking yourself, how is it that you get the clay so smooth, Mr. Kennedy? Well, not that hard, actually. In fact, what I do is I use Johnson's Baby Oil Gel. That's right. It's easy. You can apply it to the uh, elephant directly, and what you'll find is that it smooths it right out. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. That's right, it's smoothing out and it's making for a smoother butt on the elephant. Because you don't want your elephant to be going out with cracks and crevices that it doesn't need. That's right. So, you make sure that your elephant's butt is nice and clean. Johnson's Baby Oil Gel for those people who just need to make sure their elephant's butt is absolutely 100% smooth. Smooth. Look how smooth it is. That's all you have to do. Just apply and make it smooth. Thank you for watching. I still keep watching because I'm still doing more stuff. I have changed a few things on Gord. Uh, one of the things is the eyes. 
So what I did there was I literally actually took white clay and put it in behind, and then I'm gonna wrap the gray clay around it. But look at the eye there. Oh my gosh, Eddie's having a little smile on his face. Oh, look at those big eyelashes too. And by the way, didn't Sue do an amazing job on telling you how to do the eyelashes? And so you know, um, with the measurements that she gave you, you can actually also cut it down a little bit if you need to. And that, so there you are. So what we have here is the leg of the elephant. Now one of the things I notice about elephants right away is that the nail part sticks out a little bit, right? Uh, also the other thing too is that the leg, or the knee I should say, uh, comes down farther than normal, which you're used to. In actual fact, this is kind of interesting, elephants actually have four knees. No other animal actually has four knees except for the elephant. So basically it kind of looks like his uh, pants are falling down all the time. So what I'll be doing there is basically just adding decoration or I should say detail to it. So you can get an idea of what I'm going to be doing there. So I'll just scratch that in and that'll give me what I need, right? And then I'll also separate for the toenails. So now guys, you can see that I've basically made the knee and then I've also made the toes, right? And uh, basically just added in some of the textures, the lines. And that's the easiest part of it, just to follow those lines that you naturally would see on the elephant. So what I got here is I've got the elephant, uh, basically I'm working this side, and I also have the trunk to work on now. So, you can see the work that I've done on the uh, trunk to give it a little more detail. All right guys, it's time for Gord to go into the oven. So I set my oven for 275 and I'm pretty sure about good 25 minutes. I put old Gord into the oven and uh, things went pretty well. We had a little bit of a problem. Uh, the one tusk where there had still been some plasterzine actually wound up uh, oozing out and popped the uh, tusk out. So I'm going to uh, redo that piece there. And then uh, the toenails uh, got a little bit of, I don't know, banged up or something. But anyways, I think the Dremel is going to work really well on that. So basically it's going to be a bit of cleanup and then I'm just going to do a little bit of paint highlight touch up and then that's going to be it. First things first guys, sorry if the camera is a little bit shaky, I'm not really good at this kind of stuff. But here we are, we've got Gord all done, right? And you can see how he's turned out, I think it turned out pretty good. Still needs a little bit more paint. I kind of rushed that part of it. And uh, there's a few little details in here that definitely needed to be done. But I wanted to make sure that you guys would get to see what the product looked like. I think it looks pretty cool. I like his little face. And I like the fact that his eyes and everything, because of the gourd itself, I couldn't keep everything balanced. And even when you look at the trunk, look how warped it is, right? Isn't that amazing? That's so funny. I just love him. Oh my gosh. This is hilarious, but he looks good. He looks good. His eyes look good, right? He's got that little grin on his face that I want. I'm trying to get this to turn. See there, a little nice little smile, right? Got that all going in there. Big floppy ears, kind of a Dumbo thing going on. Oh, nice butt, nice butt. Uh, look at the trunk, look at the trunk. It looks great, looks great. Look at that. Oh my gosh, you're seeing some of my house. That's okay. Yeah, and he's got just, oh, that's a perfect little grin there, George. Uh, George. Gord. Sorry about that, Gord. Oh, I can do that close-up thing, can I? Ooh. Oh, look at the eye. Look at that. Oh, nice smile. Beautiful. Love it. Hey, guys. Well, there we are. We're done. Um, I think Gord turned out okay. A uh, couple little um, problems, but it's been a long time since I've been working with that kind of material. And uh, not an excuse, but uh, to be honest with you, I just... Could have known a little better as to making sure I did certain things right. But in overall, it turned out really a lot of fun. Um, I definitely know that I should never work that large, but it was the gourd itself that I really wanted to make sure that it turned out okay and cool. So, thanks for watching. Uh, I forgot to do all those other things in the video like subscribe, like, bell, you know how it works. And uh, be cool like a big bull moose. I may have already said these things, but thanks for watching.